Hey everyone, I'm Brock with PDQ, and today we're gonna to take a look at how to track service accounts in Windows. Now let me kind of paint the scenario here. Maybe you have your own account attached to services that are running, maybe on your computer, maybe on other computers or servers or whatever the case may be, and you wanna find that information. Maybe you're updating your password, you don't want services to break. There could be a myriad of reasons of why you would wanna do this, but today I'm actually gonna show you a few ways of how to do it. We'll start off pretty simple that most people should know how to do, and then we'll get a little more advanced from there. We're Going to start off going to our search field here we're going to type in services and we're going to launch the services app now the services app is great it's going to give us a lot of information about what services are currently running on the system that you are currently on and it's also going to give us the account used to run that service so you you can look over here on the right side and you can see that most of these are going to be the local system account maybe network services for trying to identify a specific account what i would recommend doing is going up here and actually sorting by this and now if we scroll down from here you'll see local service local system We've got some network services and then way down here at the bottom, uh, you'll see that I've got some accounts here that are running services on this device. So if I open this up, we can actually go to the logon tab and you'll see that information right there. So that's that's kind of one way to identify it, but doesn't really help us if we're needing to track it for maybe services running on other computers or if we have lots of computers to, to run this again. So we'll go ahead and cancel out of this. And we'll pull up VS Code here. Now this is a script that I worked on that will help you identify those services that might be running under your account. Let's kind of go through, we'll break down the script so you can kind of see how it, how it runs here. First of all, we've got our computers variable. Now, if you were gonna change something on this script, this is the part of the script that I would recommend you change. I've got all the computers listed out here, but I've again, I've only got a handful of them here. If you were dealing with much more computers, hundreds, thousands, I mean, even dozens really would be worth it. I would recommend finding another source to do that. So you could have like a CSV file, or you could use the Active Directory uh, PowerShell module to pull this data in so you're not just manually inputting your computer names that you want to search the services for. I did it this way just because it's easier to show off here. One other thing I'll point out before I really break down the script is that I do have this on word wrap mode. So you'll see like right here, katara.whiskeytime.club. I've got it on word wrap mode just so I could display everything on the screen for you. But keep that in mind as you're looking at the script. This is not a new line right here. This is a continuation of this line up here. So, all right, let's break down the script here. We've got our computers assigned to the computers variable. We've got the user. Now this is the user account that we're trying to identify that might be running on running some services from this account. So you can see I've got my account here assigned to the user variable. The output variable is gonna capture everything we have here in this for each statement, okay? Now this for each statement is gonna go through each one of these computers that we have listed one by one. And as it gets to each computer, it's gonna run this code right here. So this code, the first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna test the connection to the computer. Hey, is this a computer awake? Did you fat finger it? Is it the right computer name? So it's gonna test that out. If it doesn't detect the computer, if it can't connect to it, it's just gonna skip that computer and go to the next one. So you don't have a bunch of errors returning as your results. You can see right here, I added a computer. This Bork computer does not actually exist. This is fake. I just put it in there to make sure that the this uh, if statement was working right. If the computer is there and we can get connected to it, it's gonna run this get sim instance command. It's gonna use the computer variable. We're gonna dive into the Win32 service here and then we are going to filter that information. I've got our filter right here. We are using that variable that we declared up here, the user variable. Anything it finds, it's gonna return the properties of system name, the display name, and the start name, okay? And then we're just returning the output. So let's go ahead and hit F5 and we'll run this script and we will cross our fingers. Script ran, we've got our computer names here. So IRO's got PDQ deploy, it's got my account obviously running that information. And you can see the other computers, TOF, this server that I'm locally on, Sokka. So you can see that I've got several services out there running against these devices up here that have returned with my name attached to them. So you can use this script to uh, quickly identify computers in your environment that have your credentials attached to those uh, services. So there is one kind of caveat to this script here. Uh, so this should work in Windows PowerShell, should also work for PowerShell 7, whichever flavor of pow PowerShell that you're using. The one thing I would be cautious of is that you need to make sure that you have WinRM set up and configured in your environment 
in order to get this to work against those remote computers. Now we can go ahead and dive into our last option here that we're gonna highlight. We'll minimize that and we're gonna open up PDQ Inventory, one of my favorite all-time applications. The great thing about PDQ Inventory is it already gathers so much information from the devices that it manages. Just as a general reminder, PDQ inventory, it's always a good idea if you're trying, if you're looking at information and you want to make sure that it's like the most accurate up-to-date information, it's always a good practice to come in here, grab your computers, and then just scan them. In order to pull back the service accounts, that's just part of the standard scan. So we'll just click standard and that's going to run through. It's going to rescan all those devices and make sure that like any of the services that are currently running on those devices are fresh and brought into PDQ inventory right now. And the scan data is not from like a week ago. So if we come in here, we're on the computer tab so we'll just pull up this one I know this one had it we'll go up here we'll open up the computer details we'll maximize that for you let's scroll down oh we are already on the services tab so you come down here to this navigation bar you'll scroll down click on services that'll take you to the services page and then we kind of have our own just like we use the services app in the very beginning we kind of have our own services page here and then we can browse it just like we did through the app so we've got our account over here we can sort by that and let's see if we sort reverse sort it. There we go. We can see my name attached to a few things here. Uh, one thing I will highlight here is you'll notice if you paid attention to the script that I ran, you'll notice that the scanner was not showing as part of one of the services that are that were running when uh, the script returned the information. That's because PDQ inventory automatically detects like when you set a, uh, a scan on a computer, it starts a background service to run that scan and it automatically pulls that information in for us, okay? With this information, we can back out of the computer screen. With that information, we can actually create a report. So we can go to the reports here and I've actually already created one, but I'll walk you through it just to kind of save some time. So here's our report. If we click on define report, you'll see that we have our columns here are defined. We're just pulling back the computer name, the service title and the service account. And our filters, this is where, this is the important part. If you don't want to return that kind of false positive service that I was telling you about, which is that PDQ inventory scanner service, I've gone ahead and added a filter for it saying service title does not equal and I've put in the, the service scanner right there. The important one that you do want to have in there is the service account contains and then whatever user account you're trying to track. So if we run that report, it's going to come back and it's going to identify all the computers that have services running with them with those uh, credentials that we're looking for. So you can see here, IRO, PDQ deploy, it's running under my account credentials right there. One last thing that I'll, that I'll point out is if you have a lot of computers, you're returning, you know, a hundred, maybe even a thousand computers. What you can do is you can come in here to the computer into PDQ inventory. You can right click on the header and then you can say group by this column. And that's going to group each one by the computer name. And now if we actually kind of do a print preview on this report, you'll see it's a little bit more, I, I kind of like this. It makes it easier, I think, to take action on where it's like, hey, IRO, computer, and I can see what service and what user account is running uh, that information on that computer. So I can easily look at this report and digest it and say, oh, hey, I should probably go either use a proper service account or go change my credentials there or whatever the case may be. All right, that is gonna wrap it up. Uh, definitely a few good ways to track those service accounts. This is probably not all the ways you can do it, but th these are a few of the ways that I like to be able to return that information. Thanks for joining me today. If you want to catch more PDQ content, make sure to like and subscribe. If you want to hang out with us, we've got the comment section down below, or I would recommend heading over to our PDQ Discord server, which is linked down below, which has a ton of awesome sysadmin folks in there talking PowerShell, talking products, just talking IT in general. It's a great place to be. So anyways, thanks for watching the video, everyone, and I will see you next time. Bye.